Uh, my name is David Rosales. I'm the pastor of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley in California. As I've been observing the condition our country is in now, I've wondered how so many people could be so deceived. I realize that not everybody is as out of control as those we're seeing daily on news broadcasts. Not everybody's rioting continuously. Not everyone's filled with hatred for our president. And the overwhelming majority have respect for our law enforcement. After all, it was really not that long ago when our nation actually joined together in appreciation for their heroism and self-sacrifice, especially shown on 9-11. Who can forget their selfless bravery as many lost their lives while en entering into a, a building to save people, a building that soon crumbled to the ground, taking their lives as it did. We celebrated their sacrifice. As a nation, we showed its great appreciation to the brave members of our first responders, including our law enforcement officers. As we look around us today, we see open attacks on our brave men and women in blue who have committed themselves to protecting us from harm. They do not make much money, averaging $52,000 a year, but they give up so much so that they can take care of people like you and me. As of today, there have been 29 officers killed by gunfire, but nobody seems to care or be aware of it because we concentrate on other things. There's no doubt that reform should be made and that training can be increased and bad cops can and should be dismissed. But to make the claim that all cops are bad and that police budget should be defunded is not only outrageous, it borders on lunacy. Irresponsible news broadcasters keep repeating the same message, defund the police. I'm fairly sure that they can't be serious because after all, if the police are defunded, they ultimately will suffer for it. I simply think that uh, there are typical progressives who live in ivory towers, make-believe make worlds. In their world, they never go into harm's way, and if they do, they're protected by the same people they, they say should not exist. The constant repetition of the idea that all cops are bad seems to have gotten some traction, at least among some so-called reporters. We see the same kind of thing occurring as we hear public officials claim that the rioters are simply peaceful protesters exercising the right to free speech. It's crazy to hear them say this, as just before they make such a claim, we see buildings burned, windows smashed, looters running away with television, playstations, or an armful of liquor. So much for peaceful, caring protests. What we are seeing is the militia of the progressives. We're seeing the military arm of the Democrat Party waging war against conservative values embodied by our city and president. I was and am no fan of Obama. Millions of Americans disapproved of his arrogant hunger for attention and ineffective leadership skills. But because he was president, I prayed for him, wanted him to do a good job. This is not true of our elected officials today. They seem to want our president to fail and use every opportunity to find a way to discredit and diminish him. Just a few days ago, Nancy Pelosi chose to call the coronavirus the Trump virus. Such a comment is almost unbelievable, but considering the source, it's predictable. Talk about hypocrisy with no sense of personal shame. This is the woman who in February was inviting tourists to come to San Francisco's Chinatown, saying that everything's fine. There's no reason tourists or locals should be staying away because of coronavirus concerns. This is completely insane, but people have short memories and believe the lie. This is how she has kept being reelected and is how she has built her personal net worth to approximately $140 million. Not bad for a public servant, is it? People believe what she and other cancerous politicians say because the lie is picked up by various news organizations and repeated constantly. The simple fact is, when something's repeated often enough, it becomes truth to some. Today, this is called the illusion of truth effect. The illusion of truth effect is the tendency to believe false information to be correct after repeated exposure. Researchers established that people could already know the correct answer at the start of a study, but could be persuaded to believe otherwise through the repetition of a lie. Make no mistake, the battle that is going on is real and it's spiritual in nature. Now, why am I saying this? I say this because in the first nine chapters of the book of Genesis, the three building blocks of civilization are introduced. We're introduced to marriage, the church, and human government. And each of these institutions are under attack today. 
The rebellion we see is not simply directed towards government. It is a full onslaught against God himself. It is a battle for authority, energized by the demonic spirit that, as Paul put in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, it's the demonic spirit that works in the sons of disobedience. In Psalm 2, verses 1 through 4, the psalmist asks the question, Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces, cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. When you see churches burned, the pastor of the church say that they didn't ask the president to come to the church or, or statues of Jesus beheaded. You would have to be completely blind to not see the rebellion that is fundamentally against God and his anointed Jesus. We need to see that this battle is real, but we also need to understand that at its core it is spiritual and to remember that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We need to hold fast to the Lord, to speak the truth to those who will hear and to pray for those in authority. We need to wake up because we're living in perilous times and because we know the time is short, we must be about our master's business. Keep your eyes on the Lord, hold fast, live lives worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Take opportunities when given to encourage our law enforcement personnel. Stay in the word, stay in prayer. And one more thing, don't forget. Don't forget what you have seen come November. We need to exercise our right to vote. We need to stand for what is right. This is David Rosales, pastor of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California.